Cubasis is Steinberg's streamlined multi-touch sequencer for the iPad. Specifically designed for quick and easy operation, Cubasis makes recording, editing, and mixing a breeze. Record CD quality audio, then edit your music with the key and sample editors. And the included mixer and audio effects polish your song to perfection. Cubasis comes loaded with dozens of virtual instrument sounds, which can be played in real time using the virtual keyboard or drum pads. You can even open your Cubasis projects in Cubase on any computer. To get started, download Cubasis from the App Store. Then launch the app. This is the Cubasis interface. Move around by dragging your finger across the screen. Pinch and spread to zoom in and out. Select a single event by tapping it. Double tap to open its contents. Then tap the X or an empty area to close the editor. Vertical zoom is performed on the left column. Tap and drag on a track to move it. You can move events by dragging them with your finger. Events can also be moved to another track of the same type. You can adjust an event's volume by dragging the handle at the top. And you can create fades by dragging the handles in the top corners. You can adjust the length of your event by dragging the handles in the bottom corners. To create a new project, open Media Bay and double tap on one of the empty project templates. Now to add a drum loop, select MIDI, pick a pattern, and tap the Preview button to listen to the loop. Then double tap to add it. Use the tempo display to adjust how fast your project plays. Tap and drag across the tempo to make large changes quickly. Use these buttons to add MIDI or audio tracks. And use this button to delete tracks you don't want. Select the track you want to eliminate, then tap the minus track button. To record your instrument track, tap the keys button. You can switch between the keyboard and drum pads. Arm the track and tap the record button and start playing. To stop recording, hit the record or play button. If you make a mistake, open the tools panel and hit undo. You can position the locators around a portion of your song and then enable cycle mode. Now, Cubasis will loop between the locators, and you can add additional MIDI on every pass. Tap the plus audio button to create a new audio track. Record on this type of track using your microphone. You can also add audio files from Media Bay. Open the inspector for more options like renaming a track. Changing the instrument sound, either by steps or by picking it from a list adding insert effects and send effects, and adjusting the track's volume, pan, and so forth. You can even configure hardware like MIDI connection, or change the track's color. Now we'll look at all of this in more detail a little later. The notes and waveforms are arranged within Events. You can open the events and make corrections or additions. The mixer manages the track's volume, pan, effects, and other parameters. Each channel in the mixer represents one track. Cubasis saves your work automatically, so when you're done working, you can just close the app. 
And when you're done with your project, you can export it as an audio file called a mixdown. To create a mixdown, open Media Bay and select the mixdown category. Then select Create Mixdown. Choose the type of file you want to create, and your mixdown will appear in the file list after rendering finishes. You can also share your work right from Cubasis. Select the file you want to share, then tap the Share button. Pick the option you want to use, like email. OK, now that you have the basic idea, let's take a closer look at how tracks work. The Cubasis workflow is based on tracks. You can think of a track as a player in a band. Each one contributes a different part of the song. There are two types of tracks, MIDI and audio. A MIDI track has one virtual instrument triggered by MIDI notes. Tapping the instrument icon brings up the media bay, which offers a selection of instruments. An audio track contains actual sound. Tapping on the second tab of an audio track opens up the input options. At the top of the window is the ruler. The vertical lines and numbers on the ruler indicate bars and beats. The ruler holds the playhead, which is the black vertical line, and two locators. To position the playhead, slide it anywhere on the ruler. And this button enables the follow playhead function, which tells Cubasis to keep the playhead in view at all times. You can mute and solo each track, and there are global mute and solo controls above the track list. Setting a track to Record Enable lets Cubasis know that you're ready to record on it. You can have multiple tracks enabled at once to record on all of them simultaneously. The little speaker icon is the input monitor. When this is active, Cubasis plays back what's being recorded, but monitoring is only available using headphones. Use the transport panel at the top to control playback and recording. You can use the play button to start and stop. The skip forward button moves the playhead to the next locator or to the end of your project. And the skip backward button does the opposite. The cycle button loops the playback between locators. The record button starts and stops recording. The metronome button turns the click on and off. You can adjust metronome volume and pre-count in the setup screen. The display next to the transport shows the current position of the playhead. Tap this to switch between bars and beats and time. Now let's look at the Tools menu. Tapping the Tools button brings up a panel with tools and options for modifying the events and notes. Use the Select button to select multiple events or notes. Tap it again to deactivate and enable other options. The Split tool allows you to divide the selected event at the playhead. The Split tool in Cubasis works differently than in Cubase. In Cubase, you select the tool first, then click where you want to split. But because there's no mouse on an iPad, you have to reverse the steps. Set the playhead where you want to split, then tap the Split tool. You can use the Glue tool to merge selected events into one event. Erase deletes the selected event. The Draw tool lets you tap and drag to create a new event. Then you can double tap it and open it up to add notes. Next is the Mute button. This lets you mute specific events without muting the entire track. And the Undo button reverses your last action. Cubasis saves up to 200 undo steps, which are always available even after loading another project. Audio-related undos are a little different. Audio undo is only available when the editor is open. And the audio undo steps are discarded after another project is loaded. The redo button restores from your most recent undo command. Copy and paste allows you to duplicate selected events and paste them at the playhead. And Transpose gives you an easy way to move or transpose notes on a scale. Select a MIDI event, 
Then tap Transpose. Drag to set the semitones and octaves that you want. Quantize is automatic timing correction. When you use Quantize, Cubasis automatically adjusts the selected notes according to what's shown in this window. Tap Grid and select from this range of values, which includes options for dotted notes and triplets. The swing function uses a little less precise quantizing for a more human sound. The more swing you add, the less mechanical the quantizing will be. The option to quantize ends allows you to automatically set note duration and endpoint. This is the snap button. It controls the dimensions of the grid, which the notes, events, playhead, and handles will snap to. In the last part of this video, we'll take a closer look at the inspector. The track inspector allows for advanced track control. To open the inspector, tap the triangle. Tap it again to hide the inspector. To directly access specific options within the inspector, tap any of the handles below. To rename a track, tap the top panel to open the rename dialog. For audio tracks, you can adjust the input and toggle between mono or stereo mode. With instrument tracks, this panel displays your current instrument. Tapping the instrument icon brings up Media Bay for instrument selection. Attack defines how long it takes for the instrument to reach its maximum volume when being played. Longer attack times are often handy for backing strings or soft synth pads. Release sets how long it takes to fade out after the key has been released. Next, we have insert effects. Insert effects apply to individual tracks, and you can have up to three insert effects available per track. Tap an effect, then tap the E button to open its editor. This button lets you trigger the track's sound so that you can hear the effect and make adjustments. Each effect has a unique set of controls, which the manual spells out in detail. Tap anywhere outside the effect editor to close it. Send effects are global, and all tracks can use them. You can adjust how much of a send effect to use like this. The channel tab displays the track as it appears in the mixer. Use the pan fader to adjust your track's stereo pan, and use the volume fader to set the gain or loudness. You can reset the pan and volume by double tapping. Mute turns a track off, and Solo turns off everything but the solo track. And of course, the Record Enable button lets Cubasis know that you wish to record on this track. As we mentioned earlier, the monitor allows playback of the audio input for your track while it's being recorded. And again, it's only available when using headphones. This section offers options for configuring connected MIDI hardware, including port selection. The connected hardware option corresponds to the name of the connected device. Choosing this will restrict MIDI connection to the named device only. The virtual MIDI port connects to other apps which support virtual MIDI. This way, Cubasis can route MIDI signals from connected MIDI hardware to apps which have no direct hardware support. If you select all channels, MIDI can come and go from this track regardless of its channel. If you select a channel from 1 to 16, then only MIDI with the specified channel number will play. And the last tab lets you set the color for your track and all of the events on it.